You know what, you dorks? I feel good today. I honestly feel good today, believe it or not. I got home from work today around 10.30 in the morning. I got in my kitchen, and I made myself some fucking breakfast. That's right. I made myself some breakfast. I made myself an omelet. That's right. I diced up some red bell peppers. I diced up some white onion, and I put it in the pan with some Diced up bacon, right? And I mixed it in there. I did the saute, if you will, right? Got some heat there. Salt, pepper, a little bit of Asian seven spice. My little secret there, if you will. And then I whisked two eggs. Whisked some bitches up, if you will. Salt, pepper as well. And then my little seven spice. That's right. You season your eggs. When you already do a fucking omelet. You season your fucking eggs. When you're whisking it. You don't fucking season it the moment the eggs are in the fucking pan. You don't do that. I'm sorry, you fucking dorks. That's not how you do it. And then I did my omelette and I did the fold, right? Like you would see at diner. Like you go to fucking Denny's or a fucking IHOP. And then I'm like, you know what? This shit's not complete yet. And then I chose to make myself some fucking pancakes. That's right. Fucking pancakes. Little short stack, if you will. On the side. And for me, for me that is, right? I call that the breakfast of champions. I know a lot of you dorks, a lot of you sacks of shits out there, your breakfast may be fucking oatmeal. For some of you, your breakfast might be fucking, I don't know, tuna fish. For some of you, it might be a fucking protein shake. I don't fucking know. But that's the soy boy within you guys. But when I do my pancakes... I just do them plain. I know a lot of you soy boy warriors out there. You put some blueberries in there, some cinnamon, some bananas. Me, my rule is this. You don't fuck with it. You do not fuck with it. Do you understand me? Are we clear here? Thank you. I hope we are fucking clear here. And that's what I call a breakfast of champions. And I thought that was great. Fucking great. Beautiful, amazing, Mwah. Chef Gordon Ramsay, Chef Robert Irvine, Wolfgang Puck, Gaston Acurio, Aron Sanchez, Joe Bastianich will be fucking proud of me. They will look at my food and say, oh, he'll Steven, oh, that's delicious, delicioso, Mwah. the type of shit that would make your bitch fucking squirt, that's right, my food will make your girlfriend fucking squirt. Believe me when I say that shit. But you want to know what will not make your girlfriend squirt? You want to know what was not so great? I'll tell you. Monday Night Raw last night. Monday Night Raw last night was not so fucking great. If I were to tell you guys that, hey, this Raw from last night was the go-home show to SummerSlam, WWE's second biggest show of the year, would you believe me or you'd laugh at me? That's what I want to fucking know. Raw last night, I felt like, yo, you know what? These motherfuckers aren't even fucking trying. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me the fuck wrong. There's some shit there that I thought was okay. But other than that, the whole show, one, did not get me excited for fucking SummerSlam. By no means at all. Two, it shows you that, yo, they're just doing random shit. Let's see what sticks to the fucking wall and just go with it. And three, the more important one. At the end of the fucking day, let's keep it real about it. Seth Rollins is the f- biggest fucking moron heading into SummerSlam. The guy that's challenging for the Universal Championship, Seth Rollins, is the fucking biggest moron I have ever seen on television. That's how they made him to be. And that's on them. Seth Rollins went from this high, right? Oh my god, yes, Seth freaking Rollins burning fucking down. I was there at WrestleMania. I said this shit a long time ago. I was there at Mania, right, when he beat Brock. And everyone in the building, everyone in the stadium lost their fucking shit when he beat Brock, the three low blows, and the curb stomp and shit like that. It's crazy to think where the fuck we've been, where the fuck we, we were at. With the, with the Rollins momentum, and look where the fuck he's at now, ladies and gentlemen. And yeah, you can make the argument, oh, maybe the guy you know, ran his mouth way too much on social media, doing all these podcasts, and just saying stupid shit, and now look at him now. It's crazy. 
Last night, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania had no reaction at all. That crowd fucking sucked. I'm sorry, yo. That crowd was fucking monkey balls. Quiet. Fucking quiet. You could hear a fucking pin drop. That's how sad it was. And again, this is the fucking go-home show to SummerSlam, guys. May I remind you guys on that? You fucking soy boy warriors. May I remind you guys on that? Anyway. Also, Goldberg came back. Challenging Dolph Ziggler at SummerSlam. Whatever. Anyway, you dork, this is your Monday Night Raw review, in case you couldn't tell. For, obviously, you see here, for Monday, August the 5th. It's August 6th today. It's a Tuesday. All right, I told you, Dork, this review will be a fucking day late. But here we are. Here we fucking are. And I want to know your thoughts on Monday Night Raw. Did you enjoy the show? Did you? Yes, you, you fucking piece of shit. You watching the video right now. Did you enjoy Monday Night Raw? Did you or did you not? Did this show get you, the viewer, excited for SummerSlam? Are you saying to yourself right now, I want you to grab your hand and place it on your heart. For the first time in your pathetic life, and just say to yourself, you know, just ask yourself, you know, does SummerSlam really get me excited? You might really looking forward to Sunday. No, you're not. And if you're going to tell me that you are, chances are you're probably lying to yourself. Chances are you're in denial. Chances are you're one of these soy boy bandits that think that whatever WWE is giving you on television is the greatest shit on earth. Chances are... You're just full of it. But that is indeed around the point, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to follow me on all social media, it's at Heel Steven, by the way. Use the hashtag AT point for this review and for Twitter and all that shit. If you yet, if you have not yet checked out this past weekend's edition of Around the Point, oh my god, a lot of you soy boy warriors came out of the woodwork when the news came out of who the fuck would be on the cover of WWE 2K20. It being Becky Lynch and Roman Reigns. And oh my God. Oh my fucking God. Just everyone. All the all the SJWs. All the fucking soy boy bandits. All the fucking dorks out there came out in full effect. We don't want Roman Reigns in the cover of the video game. Why is, why is Becky Lynch sharing the cover? I got the fucking tweet still, by the way. In case you guys don't believe me. Look, this is the shit... That people fucking posted. I swear to God. That's how sad this shit was. Coming out of Sunday when the news came out. Of who will be on the cover. And oh my God. The floodgates came out. And everyone went in fucking insane. Like I said before. I speak three languages. I am trilingual. I speak English. I speak Spanish. And I speak fucking dork. I speak the language of all the smarky, dorky fans out there. I speak your fucking language, people. Believe me when I tell you that. Sad. I thought I would never see the community get so fucking butthurt, so fucking sad over the fucking cover of a fucking video game. Look how far, how low the community has gotten. It really, really is sad, for real. And nine times out of nine, nine times out of ten, the people that are complaining, and I said this all around the point, are people that are probably the product of two fathers. Probably people that when they were young, they laid flat on their stomachs and watched marathons of sex in the city. And probably enjoyed marathons of, of Pee Wee's Playhouse. For all we fucking know. They probably stayed home their whole childhood. They, they didn't go outside, they didn't go out and play, they didn't get their hands dirty. It is what it is, y'all. This is how y'all been brought up. It is what it is, okay? Anyway, dorks, it's me. It's Steve. I am the dork basher himself. I will say this. I did enjoy how Raw opened with, I guess, a new intro, I guess, right? A little video, if you will. The song was sucks. I, th I think they need to be a new song from Under Night Raw, obviously. And then it got interrupted by Samoa Joe, which I thought was pretty cool. I thought it was, you know, awesome. Great. Something different, you interrupt the intro, just like that, boom. And Samoa Joe is screaming at the announce team, screaming at them, fucking furious. He's upset, as he should be, because WWE are saying that he could be the one responsible for 
the attack on Roman Reigns this past Tuesday on SmackDown. Which, by the way, the Roman Reigns mystery of who attacked him continues and it added a new layer. Which I'll get into in just a little bit. Okay. So make sure you dorks stay tuned, okay? Stay fucking tuned. And by the way, listen, I know there'll be that one piece of shit in the comments thread saying, why are you calling people dorks, man? Fuck you and this and that. Understand this here on this show, on this channel. If I call you a dork, I mean that with love. Those of you that have been with this, those of you that have been following this channel since day one for a long time, you know what it is. But if you're new to the channel, one, don't be salty. Don't be a soy boy fucking warrior, okay? When I call people doors or mother flowers, I mean that with love, okay? L O V E. Bish, gracias. And Samoa so Joe's demanding. He wants to know, like, yo, he wants Roman Reigns to come out to apologize. He wants an apology from Roman Reigns. And Roman Reigns isn't even there yet. Apparently, he will be there. Right? And he's yelling on Michael Cole. He, he, he's yelling at him. At the announce team, like I said. And a little more, I feel like Samoa Joe would have just grabbed Michael Cole by the tie if he was wearing one. Just, just choking the shit out of him. That didn't happen. And then Corey Graves saying, hey, you know, you, you got to understand why people are saying what they're saying and this and that. And Samoa Joe threatening to, to, keep, the, to, make, to keep the show hostage. And so there's an apology. And then out comes Becky Lynch. And everything's forgotten, basically. I, again, I, I did enjoy the beginning. I just hated the, the ending of that where Becky just walks out and just fuck what Samoa Joe is saying, basically. Fuck what he's saying. Because, God damn it, we had a tag team match. Women in the ring. Holy crap. Whatever. What, 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 the, what the fuck happened to this hashtag give women the chance bullshit, huh? What happened to that? What the fuck happened to that? I wonder, people. I fucking wonder. I fucking wonder, people. Seriously. I seriously want to know what happened to that. Right? So we had Becky Lynch and Natalia. My bad, yeah, Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair, Becky and Charlotte, teaming up, teaming up to face, yeah, yeah we had Becky Lynch and Charlotte teaming up to face Natalia and Trish Stratus, the same Trish Stratus that's facing Charlotte Flair at SummerSlam, the same... Becky Lynch is facing Natalia. So basically, just have all the women that are facing each other on the pay-per-view face off in some capacity on Monday Night Raw. And here's the thing about it, too. When that happened, when I saw Trish out there, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm like, yo, so you mean to tell me that we're going to have Charlotte and Charlotte and Trish who are going to face off on Sunday, right, for the first time, right? They're going to face off for the first time, probably the first time. They're going to be in the ring to, and get physical, right? We're going to have them touch. Instead of it being on Sunday, let's have them touch on a Monday. On the Go Home Show. I was saying that on Twitter, how stupid that would have been. And thank goodness WWE did the right thing. Did not have them touch. Trish Stratus took a payday not doing shit. Just stood on the apron, waiting for a tag. Nothing happened. It reminded me a lot. You know what it reminded me of in 1994 when Bret Hart would not tag in Owen Hart. And then Owen Hart turned heel and turned on Bret. That's what it reminded me of. Becky and Natalia were in the ring. Natalia, again, was just being this aggressive, right? Granted, there's a moment in the match where Charlotte did not give a shit and just walked out. Basically, she just fucking walked out, not giving a fuck about being in the match, right? And then... What do you know? Natalia locks in the sharpshooter. And by the way, by the way, at SummerSlam, it's going to be Charlotte. My bad. It's going to be Becky and Natalia now in a sharpshooter match. Because why the fuck would it not be? Why the fuck would it not be? They're in Toronto. They're in Canada. Why the fuck not? The disarmor versus the sharpshooter. So Natty had the sharpshooter locked on Becky. And she went not let go to the count of five. The referee calls for the bell. Trish tried to let, make Natty break, let go of the hold. And then Natty shoves Trish. 
So they're making this seem like Natalia, is, is, she's woke. She snapped. She's this, she's obsessed now with trying to beat Becky Lynch. And it's like, and they're making it seem like, oh, if this Natty shows up, she's going to win. Get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here with that shit. I, I want to know who was the jabroni. That got on, that got into their earpiece of Michael Cole, Renee Young, Court Graves, and made them say those disgusting words on commentary. Whoever it was deserves to be fucking fired. I'm just saying that right now. I still have no interest in seeing Natty versus Becky. I still don't. I'm sorry. I fucking don't. However, I do, I do have a lot of interest in seeing Charlotte versus, my bad. Yeah, Charlotte versus Trish. I do. I fucking do. And thank good that they did not touch. They did a smart thing. I'm pretty sure, though, however, they might get physical tonight on SmackDown Live. Who the fuck knows, right? We get Andrade versus Rey Mysterio. They had another good classic match. Like, these two guys cannot have a bad match. They cannot. They really, really cannot. They talked about last week when Andrade took Rey's mask off. And in this match, Andrade tried to take Rey's mask off again. Uh, drawing attention to the referee. Zelina Vega then snapped Ray's uh, the net across the middle rope, allowing Andrade to hit a hammerlock DDT and the win. And it's funny because, again, these two guys, again, cannot have a fucking bad match. And there's a moment where obviously Ray did the Canadian Destroyer, this and that. God, again, this is a good back and forth match, but eventually Andrade got the win. And you know what, though? I did say. That if they wanted to at WrestleMania, they could have done Ray versus Andrade for the U.S. title, right? For the U.S. title, right? And you could have, you know, U.S. title versus versus hair, right? Andrade putting his hair on the line versus Ray Mysterio's U.S. title, but that never happened. Now at SummerSlam, again, these two guys don't have a match. They don't. Why not? And again, this is just me. And, and again, it's, 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 it's at a point now where why we're putting a random generic match literally days before SummerSlam now. This could have been built up if you wanted to. They could have easily done Rey Mysterio and Andrade in a hair versus mask match. Like, we've seen this in AAA. Matter of fact, this past weekend, Triple Mania, Blue Demon Jr. versus Dr. Wagner Jr., it was a mask versus hair match. You mean to tell me WWE can't do that too with these two guys that know the Lucha style? Why the fuck not? Granted, though, I wish, though, it would have had more of a build. Not just make it impromptu on the go-home show heading into SummerSlam. Likely, this will probably be on the kickoff show. But there you go with that. Mike Kanellis. Mike Kanell, the sucker of the year. God damn it. We go from him being threatened to be kicked in the vagina to having his wife pin him for the 24-7 title. Apparently, um, they were at the OBN GYN, right? I guess they're checking on the baby that they're about to have in a couple of months or so, right? And while all this was happening, Mike Cannell has pinned his wife and won the 24-7 championship. So, unfortunately, the title still lives on. God damn it. And in the lobby, he found our truth dressed like a pregnant woman. And Truth pulled a baby doll from in between his legs and tossed it at Mike Canellis and rolled him up for the win and to become the new 24-7 championship. You need a comedy, I guess. Don't get me wrong. I don't hate the concept. I get it. It's a joke of a title. At times, it is comedy. But at the same time, too, though, it's like, eh, whatever. Okay, that's my honest take on that, but we'll see where they're going to go with this. <sighs> Paul Heyman and Brock Lesnar, they're in the ring. This is where things just got very, very just funny, if you will. This has got very funny with this shit. Paul Heyman and Brock Lesnar, they show up on the, they show up. And they showed footage from last week's beatdown of Seth Rollins. Right? And how Rollins was supposed to be the Beast Slayer. And injured Rollins then showed up with a steel chair. 
And you would think, okay, please, what the fuck is he doing? And Lesnar, what do you know? Rollins has a weapon, and Lesnar destroys him again for several minutes. Suplexes, just, uh, just shoving him into the turnbuckle. Keep this in mind, Rollins has taped up ribs. So it seems, all right? From the beat down from last week. So, it happens again two weeks in a row. And by, and by all of this, right, after this, Rollins got on the mic, he cut a promo asking if the beating was worth it. And the crowd, what chanted it? They were chanting what? That's how low this guy's gotten. Rollins says he'll be at SummerSlam and guarantees he'll beat Lesnar. Here's the thing about it, okay? This... Does it make me feel sorry for Seth Rollins? This does not make me say, yeah, yo, he's going to beat him. This doesn't make any fucking soy boy warrior. This doesn't make any smarky dork on the internet or watching at home saying, yeah, yo, Seth Rollins going to beat Brock Lesnar. Yeah, yo, he's going to destroy Suplex City. That doesn't make them. It doesn't make any of you guys say that shit. And if it does, if it really does, do me a fucking favor. Do me a fucking favor. Turn off your television on Monday nights, Tuesday nights, and you know what? Go read a book. Go read a fucking book. And report back to me what the fuck you read. How about that? There's nothing really productive with your fucking life. This makes me say, hey, Seth Rollins a fucking moron. That's what I got out of this shit. This guy's a fucking moron. He goes out there with a fucking weapon and gets attacked again. How the fuck does anyone think this guy is going to go out there and beat Brock Lesnar? And imagine if he does. Imagine if he fucking does, yo. At, the, at a time where, where WWE is trying to make this guy feel cool. Oh, yeah, yo, he's a badass. He's cool. And no, he's a fucking dork. He's a moron. He's an idiot. I don't feel sorry for him. I'm laughing at him. <laughs> if you get what I'm saying. They did him no fucking favors. They're not. They are really doing him no fucking favors whatsoever. ever. By the way, it's raining right now where I'm at. And I just got a fucking alert on my phone about flash floodings and shit like that. What do you fucking do? Great. I'm off today anyway, so I don't give a flying fuck. We get the Viking Raiders. They defeat another, again, once again, two jobber guys who gives a fucking shit. We had, early on in the show, the Street Profits, who are defending their tag team titles, come uh, take over Toronto, right? And they're in the back with Kurt Angle, because Kurt Angle's from Pittsburgh, and he's out there because he's going to be the special guest referee in a match between Cedric Alexander and Drew McIntyre. And they're talking about, I guess, drinking milk and, I guess, being goofy and shit. And then Drew reminds Kurt Angle, because he was there, about what happened the last time they were both in the ring. How Drew made Kurt Angle tap out to his own ankle lock and stuff like that. And he wants Kurt Angle to call it down the middle. The match happens. And just like that, The Fiend comes out. The Fiend, Bray Wyatt, shows up and he hits the man of, the man of a claw. On Kurt Angle. You know what? I'm going to say this right now. I hope, I fucking hope, WWE has Bray Wyatt use the Man of a Claw as his new finisher going forward. If this is the Fiend, if this is a different person, then let it fucking be. I still think we're getting Bray, I still think we're getting the Fiend versus the regular Finn Balor, not the fucking Demon King. But who the fuck knows? Today's SmackDown, who the fuck knows really, right? But I like that. I thought it was pretty cool. Again, using the Man of a Claw. Awesome. There's a video tribute to Harley Race, who passed away. I thought it was very well done. They also, at the beginning of the show, uh, paid a tribute to the shooting that took place this weekend, obviously in El Paso and also in Dayton, Ohio. Again, I thought it was very well done, if you want my honest opinion on that. We had the New Day of Big E and Xavier Woods. Uh... Defeat the OC of Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson by disqualification. 
So basically, we had the Raw Tag Team Champions, right? Versus the SmackDown Tag Team Champions. When you think about it, in a one all in a two one in, in a tag team match, it quickly ended when Styles interfered. Ricochet made the save and is setting up out of nowhere a six person tag player player. Because why the fuck not? And then we had the OC now with Styles versus the New Day and Ricochet. Kofi Kingston wasn't fucking there. He probably making pancakes and catering. And Gallows and Anderson hit the magic killer on Woods to win the match. Now don't be now. Can you imagine, right? If they're to do now a title a, a title unification match because of this shit, I doubt it. Don't get your hopes up, dorks. And then we get to the mystery files of Roman Reigns. Who who attacked Roman Reigns? Samoa Joe shut down Raw. He he came out there to shut down Raw until Roman Reigns would come out there and give him an apology. And Roman didn't show up, so the crowd chanted CM Punk. A production guy person told Joe that Roman had just arrived in the parking lot, so Joe walked out to fight him. Joe tried to confront Roman as Roman was climbing out of the car, but another driver drove, another car drove into Roman. You hear Roman say, oh shit, and drive right and dive right back into his car. The car crashed into his car, and there you go. People are wondering, who was it? This is, again, last week, uh, a fucking giant, I guess a whole thing just falls down on Roman with crates and shit like that. And now here on Monday Night Raw, someone tried to run over him. The mystery files of Roman Reigns, people. Here's the thing about it, okay? What really pisses me off about this shit is that we're doing all of this literally... Just two weeks into go- going into SummerSlam. You could have done this in a month of build, right? Do this whole thing where, okay, he gets hurt after Extreme Rules, right? And you build up to who actually did it. Who was the one that attacked Roman Reigns? And you know what? He gets attacked and he's hurt. He's hurt again. He doesn't come back until SummerSlam to find out who did it. And this whole and le- week and weeks leading up to it, you could have had this whole thing where you're doing an investigation. <laughs> you could have had your suspects, but no, WWE once again, fucking down to the fucking nitty gritty, down to the final minute. It's like all you dorks back when you were in fucking school, when the teachers gave you fucking homework for the weekend instead of doing it the moment you got home on Friday. No, a lot of you fucking pieces of shits decided to do them on Sunday night. Right when you're about to go to bed. That's WWE for it. WWE is like a fucking school student right now. That's literally what they've become. And now we got this. Who the fuck ran over Roman Reigns? Who tried to run over him, basically? Who tried to attack him with the car? People are saying Daniel Bryan. I don't fucking know. I'm pretty sure that the mystery continues today. I I guarantee you, tonight on Raw, I don't know. He's going to slip on a fucking banana peel. Who dropped the banana peel? I don't fucking know. I know JD from NY206 is saying this, and I can agree with him too. It's basically a, a mystery, of, a Scooby-Doo mystery, when you think about it right now. He's not wrong. He's not wrong on that one. But there's that. It was so stupid, so corny. Like, ugh, whatever. We get a fatal four-way elimination match for the, for the, for the WWE Women's Tag Team Championships. And what do you know? The Iconics were the first team eliminated. Mandy Rose pinned Billy Kay after running knee, eliminating the champions first, right? Oh my God, people were celebrating. Finally, the belt are off the Iconics. God damn it, it's morning again in the, in the WWE women's division. But at the same time, though, you have these fucking soy boy bandits writing the hashtag. Hashtag give women, give women a chance. When it comes to WWE television. But you think about it, there was two tag team matches where almost a lot of women were featured. So there you go with that. After this, though, uh, Asuka, because again, you had the Iconics, you had Mandy Rose and uh, freaking Swing the Ville, you had the Kabuki Warriors of uh, freaking Asuka and, Le- and freaking uh, Kyrie Sane, and also you had Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross. So after the Oscar made Manny Rose tap out, 
to the Oscar lock. And after this, you had Nikki Cross and Alexa Bliss with the Kabuki Warriors. Uh, Cross pushed Kyrie Sane off the top rope to prevent the insane elbow, allowing Billy, allowing Bliss to hit a punch and twisted Bliss to win the match and the championship. So now we have new, we had guaranteed new WWE Women's Tag Team Championship. I'm sorry, I'm just not feeling the division. I'm not feeling the belts. They don't feel prestige. They don't. At the same time, though, this is all part of, I guess, of the storyline where, I guess, eventually down the road, Nikki Cross will eventually step out of this shit and turn on Alexa Bliss, or maybe, not. Nah, take that back, Alexa will probably turn on Nikki Cross, and we'll see how that goes, but whatever. We're giving the belts, though, to a woman who doesn't even do shit, when you think about it. I'm sorry, I'm just not, I'm not on the fucking Alexa Bliss bandwagon, like a lot of you dorks out there, I'm just saying. But there you go with that. And the show ended with a contract signing. And, a, and also the addition of Miz TV involving Miz, Dolph Ziggler, and Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels did for no fucking reason whatsoever, in my opinion. And Ziggler signed the contract. And Miz told him that he can't wait to face him next Monday on Raw. And Ziggler's like, what the fuck? What are you talking about? He's in shock, right? And Miz goes on to say because the contract that he signed was against someone else. Ziggler meant, Ziggler thought he meant Shawn Michaels. And I thought so too. For a single second, they got me there. Because Shawn's in the ring. And you see Miz turning his head to Shawn. I'm like, oh, fuck. We're going to see Miz and Shawn. We're going to see Ziggler and Shawn Michaels. Holy crap. Awesome. Why the fuck not, right? And then Shawn tells him that it's not him. But it's this person. And everyone's chanting Goldberg. And out comes Goldberg. The crowd popped. Holy crap. The crowd fucking popped for old man Goldberg. I know somewhere out there, Matt Riddle was fucking just biting his teeth. Just biting his fucking teeth, bro. Biting his teeth, bro. And Ziggler gets out of the ring. Goldberg tells him that. He's next, and then what happens is Goldberg signed the contract, and I guess Michael hits Ziggler with the sweet chin music to close the show. And then it was Monday Night Raw. So at SummerSlam, we're getting Ziggler versus Goldberg. Weeks of Ziggler talking shit about Goldberg. You're finally getting it. It's on, tele- it's on, it's on SummerSlam. I know a lot of people, myself included, honestly just don't give a shit about the match. To me, that will be the bathroom break. Listen, I grew up on Goldberg. I grew up on him all the fuck you want. But by the point now where I just don't care. Gray, he came back, but this is just for a fucking payday. I don't give a shit. This should have not closed the show. What should have closed the show, if you really wanted to, was the Roman Reigns thing. Or if not, you know what? Brock Lesnar and Seth Rollins. But either way, this, is, this was the go-home show. SummerSlam is the Sunday. <clears throat> I know a lot of YouTubers, a lot of podcasters right now are in full effect doing their videos, doing their podcast, setting up for SummerSlam coming up SummerSlam Sunday. But it's, here we go. Again, did this show get you excited for SummerSlam? Absolutely not. Are you saying to yourself, for the first time, are you saying, for you, are you saying to yourself, man, I cannot wait for Sunday? You're not saying that shit. No, you're not. Don't lie to me. Don't lie to yourself. Just saying. But anyway, you soy boy bandits, this has been your Raw Review. If you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button down below. Give the video a big old thumbs up. And as always, you fucking dorks, again, follow me everywhere. All right? I want to give a big thank you, by the way, to the homie himself, Sal Rex, for this awesome overlay that you see here. Also, the guy who's responsible for the Around the Point logo. Also, the team, a podcast logo. Mostly all the stuff that you see on my channel was made by the amazing Sal Rex. And if you are a YouTuber, if you're a podcaster, you want awesome graphics, awesome logos, graphics, overlays, like the one you see here for Around the Point, and the one that you'll be seeing for TakeOver Toronto and SummerSlam this weekend, 
They need to go hit this man up right now on Twitter. At SRXGFX. Tell him that I sent you. Not only does he do graphic designs for graphic work for me, but also for the likes of JD from NY206. You all know who he is. The host of Off the Script. The Solemn Monster. The host of the Solemn Monster Sounds Off. House of Glory. Who is having a show this coming Friday. High Intensity 8. Which I will be at. It will be the Young Bucks versus Private Party. And what will be probably both the Young Bucks and Private Party's final match on the indie before they head to AEW coming into TNT. And also Big Mike from Big Mike Wrestling Recap Show. And so many other people in the fact that he's worked with. That is Salrex. That is Salrex. That is SRX GFX. Tell him that I sent you guys. And that's going to wrap up for me. Like, probably I'll do a SmackDown review tomorrow. I am not really sure yet. Tomorrow, tomorrow will be very loaded then, if that's the case. Tomorrow I'm doing a SmackDown review. I'm also going to be doing my predictions for TakeOver Toronto. So, Mother Flowers, you better be subbed to this channel. All the stuff that's happening. Also, guys, again, if you have not yet checked out this past weekend's episode of Round the Point, I gave my thoughts on the big news regarding Becky Lynch and Roman Reigns on the cover of WWE 2K20, how the internet wrestling community is butthurt and how the IWC in 2019 is the soy boy community. Also, my thoughts on Triple Mania and a lot of fun stuff, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to start cooking dinner for later and then do laundry and a lot of fun stuff and then maybe start banging your chick. I don't fucking know. All right, y'all. That's it for me, guys. As always, hate, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, dorks. I am the Dork Basher himself. I'm Steve. This has been Around the Point.